Good morning, and welcome to worship at First Christian Church in Macomb, Illinois. We hope and pray that this will be a great day for you, that you will come into connection with your God in an amazing way. We are going to have a wonderful service. Again, thank you for joining us. Just a few announcements as we begin. If you are interested in giving to the ministries of First Christian Church, we have an app for that. It is the Givelify app that can be found on our website, www.fccmacomb.org. Again, that is our Givelify app. We have um, many ongoing ministries happening in the community, and we are grateful for your contributions to keeping those ministries alive and well. We will have an experience service tonight, different sermon, different format, different music, and we invite you to that. We are in a sermon series there called The The Other, and tonight we will focus on a sermon title called The Political Other. So we invite you to come and join us for that service tonight or at some point later in the week if you want to watch it um, via social media. Our youth groups will get together today, both CYF and Cairo, as they are headed to the Hornfield Lodge Ropes course. That's at 1 o'clock today, and we hope that you will um, take advantage of that if you are part of the youth group. We also have Bible study. Um, We're currently making our way through the book of Acts, and so if you want to be a part of that study, Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we invite you. We'll send you a Zoom link that you can join in and, and share in that study with us. It is good to be in community together, even if it is over the internet. It is good to be gathered by our God to remember our God. Today, we will do a lot of remembering as we remember veterans, as we remember those who have passed from our congregation during the last year. May our memories bring us closer to our God. May our memories bring us joy as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us hear this morning's prelude. Let us join in our call to worship. Today we worship our God who is generous and loving and kind. We sing praises to God's almighty name. We draw near to God because we know that God listens to our problems and concerns. And we know that God wants to sustain us with the bread of life. Let us rejoice and give honor to the God who loves us unconditionally and our prayer of invocation. Creator God, be present with us during this time of worship. Fill us with your thoughts and strengthen us in our faith. Encourage us as we strive to live lives that will bring glory and honor to your name. Amen. in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently 
Good morning, and welcome to First Christian Church's Children's Moment. Our story today has two main ideas, God's promise and being grateful for his many promises. Sarah and Abraham wanted very badly to have a child, yet Sarah was 90 years old, and Abraham was 99 years old. Maybe the age your great-grandparents or even great-great-grandparents would be if they are still alive. God spoke to Abraham and promised him that he would be blessed with a son. Abraham could hardly believe his ears and laughed as God said, yes, your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. Soon, Sarah found out about God's promise to Abraham, and she too laughed. The year after that, the Lord came back to visit Abraham and Sarah, and indeed there was a baby named Isaac. Interestingly, the name Isaac means to laugh. Can you imagine how surprised Abraham and Sarah were to see that God's promise of them having a baby was kept? Can you imagine how very grateful Sarah and Abraham were? They had been wanting a baby for a long, long time, maybe 70 or 80 years. In today's pandemic world, we need to remind ourselves that God keeps his promises. He is here to take care of us. And we need to remind ourselves to look for things to be grateful about, just as Sarah and Abraham were so very grateful. My husband, Mr. Kentner, and I are always trying to find things to do a little differently with the pandemic, as some of the things like visiting family and friends, attending church, going out to eat, things we love to do before COVID, we cannot do. We had a good laugh the other day. Mr. Kentner suggested that if we could not have Thanksgiving with family and friends, that maybe we could do something a little bit different, like sit in each other's chair. Mr. Kentner would sit in my chair at the dinner table and I could sit in his chair. We just burst out laughing. And then I thought, thank you for laughter. Even though we can't do just as we'd like to do, like having family and friends over for dinner, we can still enjoy a good hearty laugh and be grateful for that laugh and a little bit of cheer. So as you go through this week, remember the story of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and their gratefulness. Let's say a little prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you again for the stories that teach and touch us. 
Thank you for being there with your promise of taking care of us. And thank you for opening our eyes to the many things we can be grateful for in easy times and in not so easy times. And the children said, Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Norma. Laughter is definitely something that we need these days. It's been a week that has felt like longer than a week, I'm imagining, for you as well as me. We give thanks that so many people have turned out to exercise their right to vote, maybe more than any other election. And we give thanks that we don't have to watch commercials and receive texts and phone calls on our cell phones or even our home phones. Yes, some people still have home phones. We pray that we can move forward. I know that almost half of our country may be sad this day that their candidate did not win. My hope is that those who are not sad are gracious in their joy. But the truth is, no matter who won, we as a country need to find more unity. We need to find more civil discourse. We need to be kinder and gentler with each other. And we need more conversation about very serious topics. The election may be over and candidates may have won their races, but friends, this country is ours and we have work to do. May we seek God's help in the process of becoming the people and the neighbors and even the country that we would like to be. In the course of this week, we also celebrate Veterans Day. In this day, we celebrate the veterans of our own church. We have plaques that are adorning our sanctuary this day. They are lined up here at our communion table, remembering those who have served in the military over the course of many years. We do give thanks for these, our friends, our neighbors. We give thanks for doing what many of us may not feel like we could do, giving up our communities, our friends, our families to serve this great country. And so we just say thank you. Thank you for your service. Today, we will also, at the end of the sermon, have a service of remembrance, remembering those who have passed from our congregation in the last year. Not all of them will be members of First Christian Church in Macomb. Some of them will be family members or friends of members of First Christian Church, and yet they impact our community. And so we remember and we give thanks for life and new life that God offers to us as we remember these are friends today, these are family members today. There may be some sadness, but maybe there will be some joy in remembering. And while we have been focused on the election this week, may be focused on news stations or social media feeds. Another 5,000 people have died from COVID. This is never far from our hearts and our thoughts. So as we come to our worship, as we come to our prayer time, we remember those who are suffering, grieving, those who are working diligently to heal, We remember all who have been affected by the coronavirus. These would be enough. Just mentioning these things, it seems like enough. And yet, you have things and situations and experiences in your own life. 
Some of those have been shared on our prayer chain this week. Some of them are too precious, too sensitive to share. But the God we serve, the God who loves all of us, is approachable by all of us and comes to us in our difficult times and even our times of joy. So as we come into this moment of prayer, may we be connected again to this God who loves us so much. May we feel God's presence as we pray. Will you join me for a minute of silence as we begin our prayer this day? Gracious and loving God, we often ask you to come to us, but truth be told, you're already there. Your presence is with us in every moment. Your spirit beside us, leading us, comforting us, celebrating with us. We give thanks that you can be in all places and all times. That is a mystery to us. And yet we give thanks that you are that kind of God who is personal with each of us, that you are with all of your creation. There are many who are grieving this day. May those of us who grieve find your peace. There are many who feel alone today, break through their isolation warm their hearts and their souls in such a way that they cannot deny your presence. We pray for our country today, thankful for those who have served as veterans, have served in the military, who have given a portion of their life, if not their entire life, that the ideals and principles of our great nation can live on, can endure, can persist. As we come to the end of a long week, one that is difficult for many of us, one that brings joy to others of us, as we have elected new leaders in local communities, in our states, and even our nation. God, we ask that you remind us of our call to be good citizens. We ask that you remind us this day, God, what it means to be people of faith in a world where justice is needed, where racism pervades, where people are still without enough to eat or drink, where people do not have a safe place to lay their heads. Remind us as Christians how we are to respond in these moments. Help us to remember that you love all of us and that we can overcome hate with love. Remind us that Jesus has taught us how to take care of each other and that we have the power to do that, that we can help our neighbor, that we can bring peace to the life of one who lives in chaos. May it be that we can remember that as we live faithfully in this world, we will find joy, 
we will find contentment, and we will even find our own peace. So yes, come to us today and help us remember. Help us remember the people that we would like to be. Help us to make the changes that we need to become your faithful people. But remind us that you are already present, that you are here, leading and encouraging us. This is our prayer offered in the name of the one who is the center of our faith, the one for whom we call ourselves disciples. Hear us as we pray the words that Jesus taught us as he first taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Waters, the great unknown where feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call And keep my eyes above the waves Where oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours and you are mine without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my 
Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Ooh. And I will call Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are Sierra and Carol, thank you. That was great. I love that song. We are in a sermon series here in the traditional service. The series is called Gratitude in COVID Times, trying to remember that there is laughter, that there is joy, that there are things to be grateful for, that Yes, we may be wearing masks. Yes, we may have more restrictions in our community than we had a week ago. Yes, there are people who are struggling, businesses who are struggling. But God is present, and there are reasons to find joy, to have gratitude. As we work our way towards Thanksgiving at the end of the month, It is our hope that we will be able to find ways to be deeply grateful even in these difficult times. Our sermon today is called Grateful for Name. That will make sense in just a few minutes. Our scripture today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. May God add blessing and understanding to the hearing of this word this day. Friends, if I had 
ask you if, if we were in the midst of a study and we were having an opening question, I might ask you to name the one person in this world, living or not, that you are most grateful for. I wonder who you would name. I wonder who would be the first person to pop into your mind and possibly even your soul. I already know that some of you would not be able to limit it to just one person. Some of you might be frustrated that I would even ask you to try to limit it to one person. And it's even possible that depending on what stage of life we had been in, that we might have a different person. As a child, it might possibly be a parent or a grandparent. As a teenager or young adult, it might be friends, or someone that we were dating. As we get older, maybe a spouse, or our own children, or even as we age our grandchildren, or even our great-grandchildren, if I were to ask you, who would you name today? Think of it this way. You remember those old name tags that were sticky on the backside, and it said, hello, my name is, how about this? What if I handed you a tag, sticky on the back, and you had to write one name on it, answering that question, hello, my name is, and I'm most grateful for, who would you put? I even know that some of you would put the name Jesus and mean it. Why would you write? that name, probably something about how he or she made you feel loved, safe, befriended, trusted, more than likely the name that you would write on that tag. There are some shared experiences that are significant. This person brings you joy, this person fulfills you, this person quite possibly even brings you closer to God. Our story today is a familiar one. It's a story of faith, truly a story of God's faith, of Abraham's faith, of Sarah's faith. Before Abraham and Sarah had changed their names, They were known as Abram and Sarai, and God asked Abram and Sarai to go to a distant place, to leave their family, and God made a promise to them that if they would do that, that eventually their family would inhabit this whole area that God had taken them to. God said, look out and see all of this. Your descendants will own this land They will be my people. I will be their God. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Abram and Sarai follow God's leading. They move from their family to a distant place where they are strangers. They know no one. They have very difficult experiences. They are tested along the way, not necessarily by God but they just have trying times. Many times God comes to them, especially Abraham, and says, hey, remember that promise. It's still going to happen. Remember that promise. It's still going to happen. Your descendants will be more numerous than the stars. Your descendants will be more numerous than than the grains of sand on the beach. They grow old. There is no child. And yet God continues to come to them and say, it will happen. And sure enough, at the ages of 90 and 100, Sarah and Abraham have a son, and they name him Isaac. 
I wonder, I wonder how thankful Abraham is for the gift of a son, for the fulfillment of a promise, for the covenant to begin. We can already see that Sarah has joy. She's laughing. She's laughing at the situation. But don't you think that she's laughing deep, that there's joy in her soul, that she can hardly believe that she's become the mom that she has desired to be all of her life. In today's world, we would call that an accidental pregnancy, a late-in-life child. But there's joy. Joy in the birth of a child. Possibly the reason that God wants to work this miracle through Sarah at her old age with Abraham at his old age is to show that God is mighty. The crazier the circumstance, the more miraculous the work of God. And it doesn't really matter whether you believe they were actually 90 and 100 years old because that seems pretty incredulous in our world today. The point of the story is that these two people had a promise from God. And that promise came to fulfillment in their old age, no matter how old they were. It's pretty miraculous. It's pretty laughable. Sarah even says so. but I can only imagine that she was happy to be a mom and that Abraham was happy to be a dad. Yes, friends, the promise has been fulfilled. It is a beginning to the fulfillment of the covenant for the people of Israel. And there is joy and there is laughter. There is gratitude. There's no doubt in my mind that Sarah writes the name Isaac when she thinks of the person she's most grateful for. I read an article by a man named Edward Belling. He was sitting on a beach in Vietnam. He's originally from France and has had reason to travel the world. He began to write about some of his experiences. And while he was on that beach on a very early morning, he realized that he needed to put down his cell phone and take in the experience, that he needed to find a little gratitude in his life. He began to think deeply about this, not just on that day, but in days to come. That's why the article has been written. And he was determining that he would try to name the people that he was grateful for. But in the process, it was becoming difficult. So he decided to take the experiences that were significant in his life and remember the people who experienced that with him. He calls it a memory palace. And he says that a memory palace is basically an imaginary location that you visualize in your mind where you can store a series of images that you can use to build a story helping you memorize pretty much anything that you're trying to remember With that method in mind, he came up with a couple of questions. How did I get here? And how did I get to meet that person that I am currently experiencing this with? So he started to think about it, trying to figure out how that he had gotten to that specific beach in Vietnam. It was in 2019. And he went to Vietnam with one of the closest friends in his life, Corey. They thought that it would be a great time to go to Vietnam as Corey was going to run a half iron, um, half iron Man race. So they just thought they would go and have a good time. But then Edward asked himself the question, how did I get to meet Corey? 
Well, he met Corey in June of 2017. He'd been having some lower back pains, and he asked a friend, Vi, in Shanghai, while he was living there, if, if he should go and have it checked out. And that is when Vi recommended Corey. But then Edward asked, how did I meet Vi? Well, Edward is out to dinner with a friend named Ryan. They were talking about a number of different things. Actually, a stranger even approached the table to say, hey, have you tried this fitness center? And that's where Edward met Ryan. But how did Ryan and Edward even know to meet each other? A man named Felix. Felix was Edward's only friend when he was studying at Rutgers University in 2011. You can see what Edward did. He started in 2019 and started working experience by experience by experience back until he remembered that all of it came back to meeting Felix. He would not have met any of these people, would not have had any of the experiences. This memory palace that he created for himself made it necessary for Edward to write a note to Felix to say thank you. Without you, these experiences and these amazing people would not be a part of my life. Edward says that we should go ahead and give it a try. Think back to some of the most impactful moments in our lives and the people who have made these moments possible and special. The people who were there for us from best friends to strangers and we should send them a short message thanking them for being there. Thanking them for helping us get to where we are today. Thanking the people that we know that will bring gratitude into our lives, remembering the significant experiences that we've had and the people that we've shared them with, that will bring gratitude into our souls. Sometimes those experiences are with people that we can name easily, but sometimes... Those experiences can even be with people we don't know, that we will never know their names. Diana Butler Bass, in her book called Grateful, remembers that a few months after the church shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, you know the shooting where a young man, a young white man killed nine African Americans in a historic African-American congregation as they were having Bible study. A few months after that, Diana found herself at a memorial wall just outside the church. She was there staring at the flowers and the letters that were marking the sad and sacred place. She was kind of in her own world, but all of a sudden she felt the presence and she turned and saw two African-American gentlemen who were waiting their turn patiently. She moved to the side to make space. They brought flowers. They laid them. They stood there in silence for a long time, reading the names, reading the remarks. After their quiet reflection, they attempted to take a selfie at the wall, you know, taking your own picture with your cell phone camera. Diana said that they weren't very good at that. So quietly, trying to stay reverent in the moment, she offered to take a picture for them. They said, please, thank you. She took a couple of pictures, checked to make sure that they were good, and was handing the phone back to one of the gentlemen when he said, we came a long time way to be here. Thank you so very much for taking that picture for us. 
she began to lose it a little. She replied, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's the least I could do. It was awful. Just, I'm so sorry. Her voice began to break. Instead of reaching out and taking that camera, the man reached out to give Diana a hug. They stood there in an embrace for a minute. She says that together they stood at the wall in a companionable silence that seemed to mix grief and gratitude. Eventually he turned, as did his friend. They shook Butler Bass's hand and went on their way. She was grateful to have been there, and she was grateful for the presence of these two men. She said that the hugs and their willingness to share their silence seemed like such a gift. Butler Bass writes these words, Although we feel grateful as individuals and can develop spiritual and ethical practices of gratitude in our personal lives, the deepest experiences of gratitude move us beyond islands of isolation into connection and community. Feeling grateful causes us to reach out toward its perceived source, like a hug. Gratitude only happens when we get a real gift, writes one ethicist, completing that thought by saying, a real gift comes with a giver attached. Gratitude moves us into connection and community. Real gifts come with a giver attached. Friends, name one person, name all the people that you are grateful for and find a way to tell them, especially in these COVID times. Your soul will be filled your connection to God a little stronger. God is the real gift giver, and we are grateful for our God. In this moment, as we come to our service of remembrance, not all the names will be of people we know personally, but they are people for whom we are thankful for they've had some impact on us by their faithfulness to this church and their friends and families. So let us now remember and let us now be grateful once more for these are friends and family members who have departed from us in this last year. Charles Ever Becker. Eddie Lorraine Lori Deal. Ina Louise Doran. Larry L. Ellis. Margaret 
Joanne, England. Joanne Francis Kersey. Connie Matozzi. Dorothy G. Sunny. Theodore Ted Tingley. Linda Llewellyn McCoy Ward. May we ever be grateful for those whom we've named this morning. As I said in my sermon, if I asked you who you were most grateful for, some of you would say Jesus. And I think that that's okay. I think it's okay to say, I am grateful for Jesus because. I wonder how you would finish that sentence. Because of the love that he showed, the bravery and courage that he displayed, the fact that he considered right relationship with God more important than life itself, knowing that that relationship brings life. For whatever reason you might be grateful for Jesus, come to the table remembering what this table has meant because of the words that Jesus has spoken, because of the experience and the friends that he sat at table with and come and experience faith for yourself. Come and meet God again as we gather around this table for which we are grateful. When Jesus was at the table with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. And after the meal, he took wine and he blessed it. And he poured it.
And he gave it to them saying, this is my blood shed for you. Each time you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, remember me. Let us remember. Let us be grateful. It has been good to be in worship together today, to remember, to be grateful. May we continue to try to have gratitude even in these COVID times. And friends, may we be grateful for the mission of First Christian Church. Our mission is to receive and share God's love. As we have been in worship this day, may it be that we have truly received that even in the midst of COVID times, we can find ways to go and share God's love. In the name of the Christ, amen. Mm-hmm.